Good evening, everyone. My name is Alejandro Hurtado. Uh, I'm Ali Qureshi. And my name is Joubert Mills. This is our Mechanical Design 1 project on quadcopters, and this is how it begins. Quadcopters. What is it? Quadcopter is a helicopter with four rotors and eight propellers. There's four rotor stations, and then each station has two propellers. They use two sets of identical fixed propellers, two that are counterclockwise and two that are clockwise. The lift of the actual quadcopter is generated by each uh, station, each rotor station, and the, the, its position that is vertically up, so it just creates a lift straight up. It uses variation of RPM to create a torque in each rotor. This is then altered, and it creates the lift, yaw, and the thrust that is needed for the quadcopter to fly. These quadcopters were created mainly for military purposes and uses. The history behind it. The first quadcopter created was the Brequet Richie gyroplane. This was the first rot rotary wing aircraft to lift off ground, even though it only lifted about several feet. The second one was the OM Mission number two. It had four rotors and eight propellers driven by one motor. It had over a thousand successful flights. It was very stable for its time and it was used mainly by the Air Force as a project. The third one was the De Balthasar helicopter. It had six bladed rotors and it had an X shaped design. It had about 100 recorded flights and its highest point of elevation in flight was 5 meters. This one was also very complex for the pilot to handle because of the simple reason that it had so many rotors and it, they had, he had, the pilot had to control each rotor individually, which made it very difficult for the pilot to maneuver. The next one was the Converter Wing Model 8 quadcopter. It was the first to demonstrate successful forward flight. All the other ones previous to that only went straight up. Now this one, it had two engines that powered the four rotors, and it was controlled by varied thrust of each rotor. And the last one is our Curtis Wright VZ-7. It was in 1958. It was used as a U.S. Army project, and it was the one that paved the way for the modern quadcopters that we see nowadays. Continuation of the history. They were seen, quadcopters were seen as a possible solu solution to the problem presented by helicopters, meaning the helicopters have a propeller in the back of the tail, which is what causes them to turn. So then what, what these uh, inventions were made for was to eliminate that back rotor, which really doesn't help the, heli the helicopter lift up. So by creating different thrust in the actual rotors to create that yaw and turn that they were looking for. Um, they, had, they actually set up shorter blades also than the ones that helicopters have on the top, which helped out with the production. It, it made it a lot easier. Um, the, so something kind of bad about them was that they were very large machines and they needed very powerful engines to create enough torque for the lift. They were very diverse and complex, and also progressive design measures have been taken over the years to create smaller and less complex quadcopters. Okay, so now in the modern design, we one of the most common uh, quadcopters we see is the Indigo. Uh, so it's design is uh, was mainly based on the Curtis Wright VZ-7, right, and with the four uh, uh, rotors and eight propellers, right. It's a much smaller scale design than the pre uh, than the quadcopters that were, were in the previous history. The main reason being because it was more difficult to control the larger model. So the frame itself is mostly composed of aluminum or carbon fiber reinforced materials just so it keeps uh, the cost less and uh, it uh, keeps it less weight also. And then there's many different attachments that a, per a person can put on the quadcopter, like such as cameras or even uh, for because it was originally for military purposes, so even a small gun in a sense. Uh, so there's many different applications for the quadcopter as well. Initially that it was designed for the military uh, usage, right? There's many different ways it could be used in the military as well. Like it could, uh, if, a per, if 
there's a troop that needs to have a spy drone go out so it can uh, work as a spy drone with cameras and uh, live video footage. But then there's many other commercial uh, purposes as well, such as it could be used also, it is used uh, also in farming. They attach a high spectral imaging camera to the quadcopter. What this camera can do is when it takes uh, images of the crops, uh, it makes it easier to tell when they're right for harvest. Then there's also construction, uh, construction purposes as well. With the, uh, the you know, quadcopter going high in the air, right, it can take better imaging as shown in the uh, uh, pictures. It can take better images of the land uh, and then uh, it will be easier to figure out what portions uh, can be used for what purposes. Then there's also uh, aerial monitoring uh, surveillance and recording. So the quadcopter, obviously, because it go, uh, flies around in the air, it's and you can attach cameras to it, so you can use it for multiple footages, uh, different uh, video surveillances, uh, camera usages, uh, to see what's happening uh, in many different places. There's also uh, medical purposes as well. Now, how this, how there's medical purposes is that if you have quadcopters, right, and then there a disaster happens, a quadcopter can easily spot out uh, uh, people that are uh, still in need, like uh, for example, if someone's stuck in a building, a quadcopter can, uh, will be able to find them more easily due to which cameras uh, that are placed on the quadcopter. The future of the quadcopter, I would say, generally is based on what its multifunctional use, such as terrain versatility, stealth flight for nights, first person point of view, which is attaching a camera so that you can operate it from whether you use goggles or whether you use a tablet or your phone, that kind of way. Motion sensing control, which would be such as using your hands to generate the pitch, yaw, or lift of the quadcopter without a remote control use, as well as AI control, which would allow it to, which would allow you to program it and allow and tell it what task you would like it to do, and it does it without you having to monitor it, you, whether you use motion sensors or the remote. We designed a quadcopter that would be able to uh, use not only the first person point of view, but also have an attachment, a light attachment, as well as terrain versatility, in which it can fly in both air mode and also C mode. The way this C mode works is that the wings would fold back at the front and, per, and go right here. What this would do is this would allow the uh, quadcopter to sit on the water with, and be easily able to lift out of the water without any obstructions because of the shift in the surface. As well as these back, these back propellers would act as the motor to move it forward and back if you would like it to. Not only can this quadcopter submerge, but it can also sit at the top of the water and glide freely across as a regular speedboat. Now, we added this special light. Now, the way this light works is that it just allows you, it's a large light, it's 25 lumens, and it's bright enough for you to be submerged in the water and see uh, at least, uh, I'd say, 30 feet, or you can be in the air and your first, person po your first person point of view would be just as fine seeing anything in the air that may hit or cause the misuse of your quadcopter. Now, with this light, it's a snap, it's a snap mechanism. The way this snap mechanism works is that you would put this on and it snaps tightly onto the frame of the quadcopter. Now, and this pin would go in the back right here to lock it into place so that even if your quadcopter falls from a high distance, that it would not, it would not fall off of the quadcopter and that it would still be functional. The next part would be the actual light. Now those, this light works is that there's a battery right here. All you would do is screw off the top and also the bulb is up here. You can see it right here. This is the lens and this is just all you, this is a small two inch light that is simple and easy to use for our quadcopter. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to comment below. Uh, and we'll, we will reply to them as soon as possible. Thank you. Have a great day.